There's a bite. There's a bite. Strong one taps. There it is. Oh, what is this? And that's what we're eating, guys. Heart, eyes, and the liver. What's up, y'all? Driving down the California coast today, and I decided to make a little pit stop. I'm a little hungry, and instead of buying my food, I'm gonna catch my food. And I'm gonna eat something that is of extremely high nutritional value. Not very commonly eaten in the Western culture, but it is extremely good for you. And that's what we're doing today. Beautiful sunrise behind me. Let's go catch some food, huh? All right, we've made it. We're along a rocky stretch of the coastline here, and this is an ideal environment where you can find rockfish, cabazon, lingcod, and kelp greenling. All fish that are edible and actually delicious. So let's see if we could catch one of those today. Okay, we're up on the rocks now. First thing I'm gonna do is throw out this, this little jig here. Got this from a pit bull tackle. It's called the killer. Oh, it's a two ounce and it definitely has a bigger profile. So uh, going for ling cod and cabazon right away first. I'm definitely using a swim bait that has a bigger profile here. So, so when, when it comes to the fish that bite it, I'm essentially eliminating most of the smaller rockfish. And again, targeting ling cod and cabazon. If we can't get them on swim baits today, I'm gonna try some bait. Oh, we gotta move on. A little wet here so it's kind of hard to get your grip but just make sure you do things within your capabilities if you gotta go on your butt go on your butt look how wet these rocks look that means they're super slick. Just gotta be extra careful when you're walking on rocks like this. What I noticed about this day is that the water quality was extremely murky with just a few feet of visibility. And this is compared to some other days where I've seen the water to be extremely clear. This could be one possibility why these fish weren't biting on the swim bait. Simply because they could barely see it. This is it. All right, I got a whole piece of squid on here. Again, the thought is that I could, I could discourage the smaller fish from pecking at this, whereas lingcod and cabazon actually really like whole squid. I just have one hook on a shrimp fly with a piece of squid on here. Right in the middle there. That's a good spot. And now it's a little waiting game. There's a bite. There's a bite. Pretty strong one taps. There it is. Got it. There's one. Oh. Let's see. Oh, what is this? It's not a bad fish. It's got some decent weight to it, especially from shore. Oh, don't get snagged in a rock. What is this fish? Cabazon is my guess. Can't see it yet. Still hasn't, I don't see any color yet.
Cabs on. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice rockfish. That's a nice grassy. Look at this. Look at this grassy. That is a nice fish. Wow. Wow. That's a nice grassy. Oh, something happened with my GoPro. Uh, I don't want to lose this fish. Oh my goodness, barely hooked. Look. Uh, the hook just came out. I didn't have to do anything. It was barely hooked. If they don't go for swim baits, man, throw some bait out there. That was, I don't know, like five minutes, less than five minutes after I tossed that bait out there. Oh, the hard part is getting down from right here. Nice, nice grassy. First thing I'm gonna do is, is bonk and bleed this guy. It's probably the perfect rock to do it with. Should be out. Man, don't know why my chest GoPro stopped working. Again, man, these GoPros. For those that don't know, this is a rockfish that you can catch here in the California coast. Here, they have a dorsal fin, and on this dorsal fin actually are, are venomous spines. You can see that right there. They're all covered along the dorsal fin right here, so they're venomous. They have a sting. Their sting will hurt like a bee, but normally isn't fatal. So I got the fish bonked and bled. It's bleeding right now. So uh, in a bit, we can uh, have some food to cook up now. So we could do that in a bit. That's the heart and we're actually gonna eat that later. You can see how these fish immediately turn colors after you bonk them and bleed them. Just look at how many muscles are around. That black stuff all over those rocks, all over those rocks. Those are all muscles. All muscles is so abundant here. I could definitely harvest these muscles right here. It's pretty accessible. It doesn't look like it's been splashing too much right there. Those are some bigger ones. All right. Yeah. Got my shirt off because I got wet going for those muscles. At least I could lay my clothes out flat and uh, you know, let those dry off, let myself dry off. But what I'm gonna do now is cook in this little cave behind me, take some of that rockfish that I caught. I'll just put you guys down here and then cook up some fish liver, fish eyeball, fish heart. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna just cook up right here. Let's get a quick measurement on this guy. 18 inch rockfish. It's not bad. Uh, this is definitely gonna be able to sustain me um, for my trip. I'm gonna be driving a lot soon. First thing I'm gonna do with this fish is actually take out his heart. I don't want to pierce it, but... Just disconnect it right there. This is edible. I know that people don't. Western culture doesn't really you know, eat things like that. Look, it's still pumping, but all this is edible. Organs of fish and animals usually hold the highest nutritional value. 
And so that's the reason why I'm gonna eat this heart today. And I'm gonna eat the liver and actually the eyes. They're all edible. And I actually think that that's showing great respect for the animal and the fish because you're actually consuming everything. Check out the anatomy of rockfish for those that are not familiar with rockfish here on the west coast they have they're kind of armored they have these spines right here on their cheek they have spines here again their dorsal fin is filled with spines and and they're venomous one way actually to remove all their organs is to cut across the gills there and break that this is separated from from the fish and you could literally just pull if you could get a good grip there we go it's pulling its stomach out this is its stomach I wonder what's in there I'll check in a sec oh these flies on me but this is their liver this right here and we're gonna eat that too let's try to get all this out in one piece that's their stomach feels hard that's right here I don't want to really want to squeeze it out too much that's let's see oh uh, yeah it's another fish it's another fish here we go essentially we just gut the fish and I want to keep the liver is still pumping I'm trying to separate it from everything else here all right so the heart the liver and let's get the eyeballs of this fish See if we could do this without. And I know this seems graphic, but guys, this is natural. Like I would much rather catch my own food and eat it than buy it. Just gives me so much more satisfaction and I know exactly where my food is coming from. but it's almost out there's some tissue underneath that's one eye all I'm doing is cutting around it there's a pocket in there but I'm trying not to to burst the membrane there's some jelly like material in the eyeball itself. Try not to burst that. I can't believe that heart is still pumping. There we go. It is out. Two eyeballs. Here's a fish. No eyeballs, no guts. And that's what we're eating, guys. Heart, the eyes, and the liver. And heat up our pan. I've got some bacon here. Keep this bacon with me when I take car, my little car trips. So I can eat that in the morning. Hear that? That's a 
That's a raven or a crow. It's a uh, Watch this liver too. It knows. Look at that guy. If you guys want to experiment with liver and organs, I suggest trying something like this where you throw on some bacon. And so the flavor is from the bacon. And it has that oily flavor. It's hard to control the heat with this. But that bacon's going. That's gonna be good. This liver's gonna be good too. So the eyes are made up of a jelly-like substance called the vitreous humor. And that is made up mainly of water, but it actually has a bunch of hyaluronic acid so it's good for your that stuff is good for your skin and the heart the heart's full of protein liver is full of protein the liver is actually the organ that has the densest nutrient profile it's full of vitamin a and vitamin d vitamin d is essential for bone health it's been shown to perhaps even play roles in decreasing heart disease arthritis so all this is super, super beneficial. And normally when people, at least here in Western culture, when they catch fish and animals, they kind of neglect the liver. They, they're afraid to eat it. So a lot of health benefits in eating these sort of organs that have been neglected mainly by the Western culture. Growing up, actually, I've, had fish eyeballs really not my favorite because of the texture I have liver I've had heart and the super interesting thing about fish liver and fish liver oil is that it's different it's different from what you would buy in the stores as fish oil supplement you heard about fish oils is really good for you full of omega-3 uh, fatty acids but that's actually the supplements are actually different these supplements that you buy, they're mainly made up of extracts of oily fish tissue. Oily fish like tuna, uh, sardines, mackerel. I'm getting too many flies on me now. Gotta put a shirt on. These flies are killing me. All right, I rinse these off. So weird feeling this, uh, this heart still beat in my hand. A teaspoon, one small teaspoon of cod liver oil is enough to provide you with enough vitamin A and D pretty much for the whole day. It will take care of your daily intake of recommended vitamin A and D. Just one small teaspoon. All right, so this is, this is done. Got these portable chopsticks. I don't know where I got these from. They're in my bag though. Here's the heart. That's the heart right there. Cooked in bacon grease. Mmm. Tastes good to me. Honestly, it tastes like bacon. And the texture is, um, is meaty like it's like beef but um not as chewy and actually kind of crunchy it's really it's good there's a piece of that liver here's a piece of that liver right here let's see I mean, you can't go wrong cooking it in bacon grease if if you like bacon. That's that's really really good to me. Here's here's the rest of it. Mm. Mm. A 
texture is super soft. It's almost like, it's almost like tofu in a way. Except what I did right there was fry it, so the outside was a little crispier. But it, man, that was good. And that right there probably gave, gave me enough of my recommended vitamin A and D for the whole day. And the thing is, liver is actually really, really filling. And the reason is because it is so nutrient dense. Like I said, it is the most nutrient dense organ in the body. Well, that you can eat. This is something that has been neglected by the Western culture. I don't, you know, I, I don't know why. I don't know if it seems savage. Does it seem savage that I'm out here? Maybe actually, I don't know, man. I'm on, got some, I'm like in a cave right now. You know, like half my shirt off. So maybe, but you know, it's actually really, really healthy for you. And it's not, and I think, you know, it's not gross. And I think it actually um, is extremely respectful that you eat the entire fish versus throwing out some. Here's the eyeball. Uh, doesn't look appealing. It is probably my least favorite of the three. Look at that. Does not look that appealing, huh? It's got this jelly like. It's gonna drip. Looks like it's gonna drip soon. Inside. Inside there is a chalky ball when it's cooked all the way. And uh, we're gonna eat that. <sighs> Not the chalk, not the ballpark, that's the lens. Here's that ball. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the eyeballs. You cannot eat this part. That was a good day. Right past noon, so I had my, some food, got some energy, got some good nutrition. Now to hike back up to my car and make my way down this California coast. And I still have a whole fish that I could cook up later. Well, hope you guys learned something. See you guys later.